making a video, making a video for you guys to enjoy, for you guys to enjoy, for you guys to enjoy. Stop. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> it's like, stop it. Don't do that. All right. All right, so last week I had a chance to make a live music video using my Canon EOS R7, which is recording right now, and the Sigma 18 35 f1.8 art. Now, the problem of shooting a live video with just one camera is that, that, well, they played the song only once. So to cover up all the angles from that one specific song would take like, yeah, three cameras or even more. But I only had the one and I was alone. So how did I nail this? How did I do this? How did I get it done? Done, and how the heck did I make it look so good? Yeah, I'm actually proud of my work. So in this video I will be going through the things that I learned from shooting a live music video with the Canon EOS R7 using only one camera. How did I plan it? How did I shoot it? And what mistakes I won't be doing the next time? Alright, so the band in question is a local band called Liverbox. They just released their new album and they had an album release gig. Now for me this project, this live music video was a challenge. I was not paid for this whatsoever. They did not pay me anything. I just wanted to help out a friend and his band and make a kick-ass good-looking live video. Now the music of this video is not the live recording from that gig. It is the album version of that song. So I had to match all the footage that you see to the album version of the song. But basically, since it's a music video, it doesn't matter that the audio is not recorded live straight from the mixing table, because yeah, the visuals are everything that matters. Okay, so how did I manage to film this gig? Because I am a one-man band. I only have one camera, I'm not using any GoPros or anything like that. I don't have an assistant, I don't have a second cameraman. Well, sometimes I do, but on this gig, there was none. So how did I plan out to get the shots that I wanted? My solution to that was filming five songs from that gig. One of those songs is the song that the music video is all about. So during that time, I had to make sure that I record the lead singer a lot because you need to get the visuals for the singing and you can only do that while they're playing that song. But I can't film just him for the entire time because there is guitar solos, there's lots of things that are going on in that song, so I have to film different kind of segments. Out of those five songs that I filmed, three were pretty close to one another when it comes to things like beats per minute and the style of the song and the overall build of the song. When it comes to verses and choruses, bridges and guitar solos and stuff like that, they were, those three songs were pretty close to one another. So from these songs I could take lots of bass playing parts, guitar parts, drummer parts, and then I just mixed those clips to together so that they match the music. Because when you think about it, when a drummer is playing a song that has the same beats per minute, and when you can see the drummer playing the drums, it doesn't matter basically what song are you recording. So basically every time you see a drummer on this video, none of that footage is from the actual song, but from a similar song. But it was easy to mix in in the edit and match the audio from the album version of that song. Now the same goes with bass. Basically bass is played same all the time so if the if the song has the same beats per minute of course it's gonna it's, it's gonna look the same so I made sure that I got the backing vocals from the track I was going to make the video of and I just basically matched the rest of the bass playing in this video from different songs now when I did it like this I had to focus my attention on only two guys during that song I was going to make the video about the lead singer and the lead guitarist. I also used some filler shots in this video which I planned in beforehand, you know, like the guitarist pressing the pedal or kicking the air or the bass player moving around and doing all that stuff. I planned that everything beforehand. So it was easy for me just to get that shot while it was happening and then I just mixed them in in the edit while I was making the video. And I'm pretty happy with the result. I think that it looks good, especially when you consider that this was my first time making a live music video. I have never done anything like this before. I've been taking photos at rock shows, but I have never shot a live music video. Alright, so what did I learn from making this video? The first lesson is shoot more content. This is something that I will be fixing 
for the next time that I will be making a live music video because even though I filmed five songs during that gig, it was not enough. So next time I will be shooting maybe like six or seven songs from that gig and try to get a bit more angles into, into the final product. The second lesson that I learned is plan it a bit more ahead. Because this gig, this project, it came to me into my mind like uh, maybe two days before. So I did not have that much of time to plan this. So next time I will be planning my shots way, way more carefully. So I will get everything that I need for the video. And the third lesson that I learned from this project is to shoot more of the reactions of the audience. Now I did film some footage of the audience from this gig, but I could have done that a whole lot more because it's not just about the band. When you're making a live music video, it's also about the audience. And usually the audience kicks in like after maybe the halfway through the gig, at least here in Finland when a small band is playing, the audience takes time to warm up for the gig. So that's why you should be filming a whole lot more from the start of the gig, from the middle of the gig and from the end of the gig. Because at the end of the gig, the audience is usually more in game. So you will get better footage of the audience. All right, to sum up the lessons that I learned from this project, number one, shoot more content, shoot more than five songs, shoot six, seven, or even eight songs, maybe the entire gig. If you have enough space on your, on your memory cards, shoot the entire gig, you're not gonna lose anything. And it's only gonna help you with the editing of this video. So yeah, shoot more content, shoot the entire gig. Lesson number two, plan better. Better. This is self-explanatory. Just reserve yourself some more time than just one or two days to plan out the project because yeah, if you plan it well, it's half done. And the final lesson, the third one was to shoot more reactions from the audience because a live music video is not just about the band, it's also about the audience and it's also about the chemistry and the interaction between the audience and the band. Now that's all I have for you guys today. If you got something out of this, if you like this video, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you have not done so already. If you want to know more about the lens that I use to shoot this entire music video, go check this video out. Thanks so much for watching and as always, I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.